Now these imperial court conspiracies to which people like Michizane fell prey was something that the Minamoto for a long time were largely safe from here in faraway Kamakura. But eventually they too would become entangled in toxic imperial court politics. And for the Minamoto it would almost bring about their utter destruction. Another offshoot of the imperial family which like the Minamoto had gone off to seek their fortune in the outer provinces were the Taira clan and for a long time relations between the Taira, the Minamoto, the Fujiwara and other noble families were harmonious They worked together, they cooperated, they fought together, and they intermarried. But as time wore on, certain members of the Tyra clan developed a propensity for going rogue. Not only defying imperial authority, but often proclaiming themselves as emperor. And it was often up to the Minamoto as imperial enforcers to bring them back into line. In the middle of the 12th century, after 200 years of failed coup attempts, the Tyra hit upon a new idea. Not to overthrow the imperial court, but to infiltrate and manipulate it. So that by 1156, the Tyra were firmly in control in Kyoto. And so, in 1156, with the Taira clan firmly in control in Kyoto, the Minamoto finally found themselves embroiled in imperial court intrigues when a dispute arose over imperial succession. Maybe subsequent events wouldn't have turned out so tragically for the Minamoto had they all chosen the same candidate. But the clan leader, Tamayoshi, and his son, Yoshitomo backed rival candidates for the throne. After the short war that ensued, it was Yoshitomo Minamoto who prevailed. So he and the Taira placed their preferred candidate, the man who would become Emperor Go Shirakawa, on the throne. But matters didn't end there, as the vengeful Taira, perhaps seeing this as a means of weakening and perhaps even destroying the Minamoto, ordered Yoshitomo to execute his own father. Ultimately, Yoshitomo wasn't forced to commit patricide as one of his faithful retainers committed the act himself, executing Tamayoshi before performing one of the first instances of harakiri in Japanese history. But this had created bad feeling between the Taira and the new Minamoto clan leader Yoshitomo and before long he was in open revolt. With imperial authority behind them, the Taira were unstoppable though and soon Yoshitomo found himself on the run. And by the end of 1159 he was dead and his clan were leaderless and the Tyra were pursuing them with the aim of bringing about the clan's utter extinction. The only ones who survived were clan members who managed to flee to their eastern strongholds, or clan members who were deemed too old or too young by the Tyra to be of any threat. Two members of the Minamoto clan who were spared execution Yoshitomo's youngest son, Yoshitsune, a mere babe in arms who was packed off to a monastery in the mountains outside Kyoto, and Yoshitomo's 15-year-old son, Yoritomo, 
primarily because the Tyra clan leader's mother-in-law proclaimed Yoritomo reminded her of her own deceased son. And so, despite Tyra clan member warnings that this was like letting a tiger loose in the wild, Yoritomo was packed off to the east to live under the careful watch of a distant Tyra relative, the Lord of the Hojo. I'm here tonight to see the fireflies, hopefully. Fireflies love clear running water, like in this mountain stream. two most famous species of firefly became known as Genji and Heike named after the two clans that swore allegiance to Japan's two most famous warrior families of the 12th century the Minamoto or Genji clan and the clan that would go on to become their bitter enemies the Tyra or Heike clan and the story of the violent battles between these two clans for supremacy of Japan is contained in the nation's greatest war epic the tale of the Heike which begins with these words Guillaume bell tolls, sounding the knell that all things must pass. Like the colours of the summer camellia, prosperity is ever followed by decline. The proud do not endure, they are like a dream on a spring night. Even the mighty meet with destruction until they are as dust before the wind.